In this video, we derive the MA representation for an AR1 process with a unit root. The AR1 model is given by yt equal to a constant term delta plus theta yt minus 1 plus epsilon t. As usual, t goes from 1, 2, all the way to capital T, so that's our sample size. We assume that epsilon t is IID with constant mean 0, constant variance sigma square, so it's a white noise process. And finally, the initial value, y0, is given. A unit root means that the characteristic polynomium has a root equal to 1. So when we evaluate the characteristic polynomium in set equal 1, it is equal to 0. In the AR1 model, this means that 1 minus theta is equal to 0, which means that theta is equal to 1. So this is our unit root. We have a value of the autoregressive parameter of 1. So we can write up the AR1 process with a unit root. And that is simply the model yt equal to constant term plus yt minus 1 plus epsilon t. Alternatively, we can rewrite this as a first difference. We simply subtract yt minus 1 from both sides. So the change in yt is equal to a constant term plus epsilon t. In the special case where the constant term is equal to 0, we, we call this a random walk. Note that if the constant term here is equal to 0, then the change is just given by a random error term, a white noise process. And the process for yt is a random walk. In the general case where theta or where delta is not equal to 0, we call the process a random walk with a drift. So to study the properties, we derive the moving average representation. So we start with the formulation of the model, yt equal to constant term plus yt minus 1 plus epsilon t. And what we do now is simply recursively we substitute in here for yt minus 1, yt minus 2, and so on. So that's quite easy to do in the AR1 model with a unit root. First we get constant term from before, and then instead of yt minus 1, we get a constant term plus yt minus 2 plus epsilon t minus 1, and then we have the original epsilon t from here. So now we have 2 times delta plus, and instead of yt minus 2, we directly substitute in for yt minus 2 to get delta plus yt minus 3 plus epsilon t minus 2, and then we remember epsilon t plus epsilon t minus 1 from before, like this. So what we see here is that at every point, at every t, we add delta, and then we just add the level of the variable, the period before, plus a residual term. So if we continue like this, we get an expression where instead of yt minus 3, we can recursively substitute all the way back to y0. Then we get all the constant terms here accumulated, so we get exactly delta times t, so we have 1 for every period. And then finally we have epsilon t, epsilon t minus 1, plus epsilon t minus 2, all the way back to the first epsilon, epsilon 1. So the shocks here we can write as a sum from i equal 1 up to t of epsilon i. So this is simply the moving average representation for an autoregressive process of first order with a unit root. Now, if we look at the three individual terms here, the first term is simply the initial value. And we note first that the initial value here stays in the process. So there's a permanent effect of 
of the initial value. Y0. If we change the initial value, we simply shift the entire process up or down. The next part here, note that these are the constant terms multiplied by t, so we have a constant term at every point in time. They accumulate into a deterministic trend. So the thing, second feature we note is that the constant term accumulates into a linear trend. Well, we will note that this is not an attractor. It is simply a linear trend, so the process has a tendency to move up over time. The last thing here is that we note that all the epsilons here are being accumulated into what we call a stochastic trend. So the stochastic trend here is simply the sum of all the epsilons from t equal 1 all the way up to t. So the third thing we note is that the shocks have a permanent effect on yt. Note that all these shocks have the same effect, an effect of 1. So the derivative of yt plus s of a shock epsilon t is equal to 1 for all s greater than or equal to 0. So the shocks have a permanent effect. The effect of a shock at any point in time stays in the process. It does not die out over time, as was the case in a stationary AR1 process. So we could, last thing, make a simple plot of what a process like this looks like. We start the process at y0, and then we note that there's a deterministic trend. So let's draw it like this. So here we have a deterministic trend where the slope is given by the constant term. And then we have the series looking something like this. So this could be a plot of y0. Note that it is not fluctuating around the linear trend. It has a tendency to go up, but a random walk process, even with a drift, has no attractor. It just fluctuates randomly up or down. If the constant term is not equal to zero, it will have a tendency to go up over time, but not in the sense of an attractor. That's all for now. Thanks for watching.